Shao Kahn created us as well. You cannot kill what is already dead. Magic binds me still. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to another MK Mobile character review. This time we will take on Assassin Jade, probably the most annoying character in the game. And of course I am aware that this review comes very very late. You guys have voted on Twitter. And that was almost a month ago by now. But I guess you can imagine how it goes. We had a new update, then we had issues with the update, then we had to cover the update. In between we had several challenges and of course then reviews for the challenge characters. So I'm very very sorry that it took me so long. But now let's get right into the review. Assassin Jade coming up for you guys. Enjoy! Assassin Jade is part of the Martial Artist and Outworld class, and her passive is called Vanishing Winds. Assassin characters on the team have 40% chance to dodge any special attack or combo ender. Jade retaliates with an unblockable crippling attack that deals high damage. Assassins do 10% more damage versus Circle of Shadow. Assassin Jade started her journey in the MKX mobile days and she was introduced with update 1.13. She then pretty much had her very first challenge and she was ultimately maxed out with Fusion 7 and level 50. Her original passive was called also Vanishing Winds and it stated Jade has the chance to dodge any special attack or combo ender after which she retaliates with an unblockable crippling attack. Jade's teammates can tag in at a much faster rate. Of course she was part of the challenge pack and if you wanted to buy her after unlocking her from the challenge, you could buy her in the store for 421 souls. Later then the level cap was raised to Fusion 10 and level 60 and even later then with update 2.0 she became Diamond. She then was available in the Assassin Diamond Pack for 400 souls, but I have to tell you guys right now I am not even sure if this pack is still around. Because in one of the later updates, then Assassin Scarlet was finally added as the third character of the Assassin team, and then another pack for 400 souls was released, the Assassin Scarlet Pack. Assassin Jade and Assassin Kitana are also a part of this pack, so that is why I am not really sure if the original Assassin Diamond pack is still around, or if they just replaced it now with this one. Jade's gear piece is the Bujutsu Staff and it gives you 25% critical hit chance boost, Every missed attack boosts Jade's attack damage by 60%, which is for Jade characters only, and 25% damage boost against enemies affected by bleed or poison. In terms of her feats of strength, she will have to win 500 matches in battle modes to unlock her rune. For her victory stances, she has to win 750 matches in Faction Wars. For her taunts, she has to knock out 500 Kitana enemies. For her icons, she has to knock out 1000 enemies. For her backgrounds, she has to win 200 matches in challenge mode. And for her titles, she has to perform 3000 combo enders. And now we are going to take a look at the victory stances one by one. And we are starting with Double Down. Next up we have No Chance, third will be the Stuff Cutter,
and the exclusive for Assassin Jade is Now You See Me. And on your victory screen it will look like this. Now I'm going to show you all of her backgrounds. Next we have the icons. And finally the titles. Assassin Jade has two tag attacks. The first one is when she tags in and she will just deal an appropriate amount of damage and she is also capable of knocking out your opponent with this tag in. The second one is dealing damage while she tags out, but this one will not KO. Assassin Jade has two kinds of combo enders. The first one is a low mid and it knocks the enemy down to the ground. The second one is a high, which also involves her staff for the punches, and she aims directly for the opponent's head, leaving him on his feet though. Her basic attacks can also easily be chained. Her special one attack is called Staff Whack and it has a shield break effect tied to it. This means that you can remove shields from the opponent, but unfortunately this does not include Bone Shield or Revenant Shields. Her special attack too is called Spinning Staff and it has a blindness effect tied to it. It deals a high amount of damage and just as her special one, this attack is capable of KOing your opponent. In case the opponent survives this attack, he will be suffering from blindness and his basic attacks may whiff a lot. Her X-Ray is called the Staff Buster and it also has the blindness effect tied to it. This one already looks very painful on females, but on male characters it looks even more extreme, turning almost male characters into females. Her passive is called Vanishing Winds and she will just evade attacks and those include regular special attacks as well as combo enders. The crippling effect after the retaliation is very very useful, simply because the opponent cannot use his special attacks for quite a few seconds. And now it's time to recommend some gear for Jade and my first choice would here be the Bladed Fan. And yes, I am pretty aware that I'm bringing this up now in almost every review, but that is simply because this gear piece is so incredible, because it does not only block break on basic attacks, but also gives you the chance to heal on special ones, and given the high damage of Jade's special one attack, imagine the heal effect. Another one, and I found this one always very mean on Jade, is the bloody Shokan armor because it's already so hard to take her down and even if you get through and she uh, manages to block the attack, then reflecting back the damage is just sadistic. But it can get even meaner and that is if you put the Moloch's ball and chain on her. 
Moloch's Ball and Chain has a chance to break up the block on special attack use, which basically means that her special 2 pretty much instantly becomes unblockable given the many hits that it deals. And on top there is a chance for lethal blow attacks and now imagine that Jade evaded a few times, gets a few times that 60% damage boost and on top deals lethal. Good night. Shao Kahn's helmet will not only boost her health, but it will also boost the crit chance by 40%. If you play this gear piece together with her staff, that's already a 65%. And you already might have guessed it, the very best gear piece to put on Assassin Jade is of course her Bujutsu staff. This piece of gear will not only guarantee that she becomes stronger with every evasion, but it also will work very well together with the Shao Kahn's helmet for example, or you can put a block breaker like the Vial of Infinite Blood on her, and once one of the combo enders causes bleed, the staff will also amplify the damage boost. In terms of character recommendations, of course, the closest would of course be Assassin Scarlet and the other Assassin, Assassin Kitana, since those three are a team together. Both of these characters are causing bleed. Scarlet, for example, directly at match begin for 15 seconds and Assassin Kitana every time she tags in. Although Jade might benefit here basically only from Scarlet, because Kitana only applies the bleed on tag in and until she is able to tag back to Jade, that bleed effect might be gone until Jade entered the battlefield again. But thanks to Kitana, Jade will have a 30% increased power generation rate. My third recommendation, and that's not necessarily somebody who amplifies Jade, but that's classic Raiden simply because they work so well together. Both of these characters are very deadly and if you tag around between those two, they will just wreak havoc in Faction Wars. Character number four, and that is again because of her passive, is Vampirus Melina. You just have to wait long enough until she causes bleed via her passive and then just tag to Jade who wears of course her staff and then has the damage boost against bleeding opponents. My favorite teammate for Assassin Jade though, and that is also because of the passive, is Classic Reptile. On tag in opponents can be poisoned immediately which also gives Jade that damage boost. Ever since Assassin Jade was released, back then even as a gold challenge card, she always was splitting the community into two camps. Beginners were crying out in pain how difficult it is to take her down, while veterans and experienced players rejoiced and appreciated the challenge and also very soon found ways to deal with Jade. The only problem is that mostly the beginners haven't figured that point out and therefore almost everybody plays her in Faction Wars, which means that, especially when you play maxed out cards, you will constantly face Assassin Jade and it is so annoying to fight Jade number 500 within just one week. And there is also that saying that if you want an easy match, you will start with Circle of Shadow Liu Kang and have Assassin Jade in your team, unless you are willing to finally learn to play, because then you will no longer need them. Or let me rephrase that, then at least you will no longer depend on them. And now it's time for the pros and cons again, and my first pro is of course that she has the chance to evade attacks. This is very much in the player's favor if it happens, but I tell you right away, if you are just looking for Jade because she can do that, then you might not be that satisfied after all, because this evasion mechanism works 10 times more in the favor of the AI, and you will see the AI evade attacks 8 times, 9 times, 10 times in a row, and when you as the player are waiting for the evasion, you can be happy if it happens like 3 or 4 times during an entire hard battle. My second pro is the high damage output both special attacks deal. 
especially already special one deals so much damage that you in most cases don't even need to hit her up to a special two because the special one will be already enough to deal with your opponent appropriately. And third, I would choose both debuffs. Maybe I would even go up for all three including her passive, but starting with the shield break which is already super useful, especially when you are facing characters like um, Shao Kahn after his X-Ray or Sonya Blade after X-Ray Tremor. Um, then how about characters who also have a shield like Circle of Shadow Kung Lao or Nightmare Freddy Krueger. As long as these guys are trying to protect themselves with their shields, Jade will just launch one special one and can deal normal damage again. So now let's get then into the negatives and my very first negative would already be the annoying AI which I already mentioned. The AI gets the advantage with tons of evasion chances while the player doesn't have this benefit at all and that was already the case as she was just a gold card so she was already annoying enough making her diamond was just a slap in the face. But by any means she is not perfect at all, because she has very huge gaps in her basics, which enables us to deal with her quite easily and take her down without bigger problems. Some interruptive gameplay here, some strategy there and Assassin Jade is history. And as I already mentioned she is everywhere, every player who is not willing to invest time to learn other characters just plays the safe characters and that makes the game at times pretty boring because I, as I already said if you manage to handle Jade then she is no longer a threat and you will constantly see the same characters over and over instead of the entire variety the game has to offer. So at this point I would really love to inspire you guys to learn other cards instead of just using the same old candidates over and over again. The game does not consist of only 5 characters once you play maxed out teams. Assassin Jade is absolutely incredible for absolute beginners but once you reach level 60 please man up. There are so many fun characters in the game so please learn them and enjoy it. So now it's time for the rating and my final rating for Assassin Jade will be a solid 8 out of 10. She is right at the brink between good and great, especially because of her evading chance. If it works it's fun. All the way from her tag end to the evasions to the debuffs. Also the design is good. So there are many positive things to be found in Assassin Jade and she deserves a high rating without any doubts. But we once again now reached the end of this review and I really hope that you enjoyed it. Once again I'm very sorry that it took me that long but sometimes there is really a lot of stuff going on in MK Mobile. At the end of this video I will link you to my other video I did on interruptive gameplay so you actually can see how to deal with Jade appropriately. And now I can only say stay safe and healthy. Thanks for tuning in again. Casey over and out for today. Thank you for watching Realm. If you enjoyed the slaughter and the bloodshed you can support the channel by clicking on the like button. You can also click on one of the two videos presented by Baraka here. Also make sure that you are subscribed and click the bell notification icon to be notified upon new uploads. You all know the drill, wound not kill, have a good one, and see you next time. <laughs>